So we're about to do what I call putting a rainbow shape on it. So get your rainbow flags out, it's Pride Month. And then put your half round pliers against the bench peg. Get some parallel pliers. I'm levering this metal this way, so it's following that curve uh, against this point on my pliers. So there, there, you can literally see marks on my pliers there, and then that's a bit scuffed up as well. So doing this, so I, just, I, just th I just squeeze these tight, and just think about holding them sturdy, so you wanna find a, a spot on your bench peg where they're not gonna slip about. So you wanna put in strength into this, but with control, and then this hand, I'm just squeezing quite tight, obviously, trying to hold it still, and then just with my whole arm, right back to my shoulder, just tweak it back. I'm not trying to do the full bend at each go. I'm just tweaking it a little bit, just a little bit, move it along. It's quite small. And uh, try and move it the same amount every time, and then tweak it the same distance every time. And that does help you. It's never, it never works perfectly, but it does help you end up with an even curve. Because that's what you want to end up with. If you end up with a curve that's sort of sharp and then straight and then sharp and then straight, it, uh, it, all that has to be ironed out before you can turn it up into a collet. So you may as well, right from this stage, try and end up, try and create an even curve rather than just a, a really wobbly one that needs loads of work to sort out. And uh, also consider what actually are you making? There's a relatively small stone for this length of metal, so I haven't got to curve up loads. That's already enough, I think. So, uh, yeah, a bit twisted up, a bit wonky. That's kind of normal. That's a little bit worse than what normally happens to me, but I'm a bit ill. <laughs> you, you can probably tell from my voice I'm recovering. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, I mean, this is silver. I think that's soft. I could bend that more, but quite often, I'd bend it a bit and then uh, anneal it. Uh, it still feels kind of soft to me, so I'm paying attention to what the metal's telling me. If it just feels rock hard, then I'll, I'll just anneal it. Stopping to anneal your metal is doing the job. It's not stopping and interrupting yourself. That is an important part of creating what you're creating. So if you're an employed jeweler, I think the people in charge of you, if they've got a bit of experience making jewelry, I think they'd rather see you over annealing metal and keeping it soft and looking after it rather than bending it too much just to sort of get on with the job uh, quicker. So yeah, annealing is important. People have asked me in the past, how tight of a curve do you need? <coughs> There's no like strict rule on it. <coughs> There's no strict rule on it. I can't speak today. There's no strict rule on it. Ah! Right, people, let's try that again. People uh, have asked me in the past, how tight of a curve do you need in your metal? And there's no strict rule on it, but I, I would, if I've, if I've got to give you some sort of guide, it's the top half of your ring stick. I mean, on bigger things, I've used the handle. The handle seemed to fit quite nicely. Uh, it is actually useful to have something round, like this is coming useful. If you just got something circular, a bit tube or something you can hold in your hand, you can put your metal over it and uh, test test the curvature. I mean, I use my loop as well on the inside of rings. Um, yeah, you want something round, you can judge it and just see how, how much of a neat curve you got. 